What's up guys, welcome back to the infamous project. Working here on project come and take it, getting an early start on things. And you can see laying on the ground is a whole bunch of dry rotted rubber and debris. And you guys might be wondering what exactly it is that I'm working on. Well, it's changing out the window channel runs. And if you guys are unsure on what exactly that is, well, I'm about to show you. So you guys are gonna have to excuse the car. It is filthy. It was outside last night. It's a little bit of the dew and dust and everything else, but I had finished painting up the trim yesterday and everything turned out really nice despite me having to do it on the car. But other than that, I'm really happy. Quarter window moldings look great and everything else turned out really, really nice. So these window channel runs are actually the rubbers that go here along your door frame all the way around and what hugs the glass when your window is all the way up. And these guys, just every year that goes by, they're getting older and older. And rubber, well, it doesn't like to age very well. And I got to say, this one was actually like probably one of the worst that I've worked with to date. Like. Talk about brittle. I had to like pry this stuff out. I had to chip it and pry it out. So needless to say, it wasn't sealing the windows up very well. Um, I haven't got the car up to speeds yet, but let me tell you, if your windows were rolled up and you were cruising down the highway, I'm sure you'd be getting a lot of wind noise. We all know about changing our door weather strips and all that, which is a whole other story. You're gonna find that a lot of them, the aftermarket ones are bulky and your door doesn't want to shut right after you've changed them because the seal is so tight. And there's actually a trick to that. I'm not sure if I ever shared it with you guys, but you guys can actually use a pin and poke a couple pinholes in there to help the weather strip actually breathe. But we'll save that for another day. So anyways, I've already done the driver's side here and it was one of those moments like, oh shit, I better go grab the GoPro. And uh, we'll get over to this passenger side here and show you guys exactly what I did. Just quickly, before we get into the window channel run install, I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek of some earlier footage of me painting the trim on the car. I know a lot of you guys have watched the videos of me restoring trim, and I love to do it off the vehicle, and I'm gonna tell you guys why, in fact, I did it on this car, with the exception of a few pieces that were easy to remove. But the reasoning behind that, why I did it, and how you can do it if you're in a similar situation. So here you guys can see the car is all masked off, the trim is all prepped, and there's been nothing different in terms of the way that I've prepped the trim. It's the same way that I would have done it if I had taken it all off. And first things first, why am I painting it on the car? I have done quarter windows on the car before, and the reason I've done quarter windows on the car is because if the car's been painted and the windows were left on and they masked around them and there's paint build up, it's always because I didn't want to potentially chip the paint on the body or any of that by trying to remove the glass. Well, the same thing sort of holds true in this case because all of the trim had been masked off, the car had been painted, and then they'd already painted the trim once on the car. And they had used a base clear, it was glossy. There was actually lots of shit in the paint. You know, there was lots of fish eyes, lots of dirt that I had to sand and get all knocked down and nice and smooth. So as you can see, there's really nothing different. You gotta prep it, you gotta do it. It's the only real different thing is here. I had to mask off everything around the trim and I had to try and mask things as good as I possibly could. And you can see here, I've tucked that tape in nice and tight and snug the same way that I do when I prep out the quarter windows to do those and I am going to be replacing the window channel runs, but I'm using them right now, the old ones. I've pulled them back down, kind of off the actual door frame, and I've used it as a masking point. So that, that way I have something to mask to and to keep overspray from going in the car. And these are the tricky ones, guys. Like these ones, depending how they were installed and it looked like I was gonna break clips, I was gonna potentially wreck paint. 
So that is why ultimately I really wanted to keep everything on here. You can see I still removed the mirrors. I still removed these guys. Actually, these are getting replaced and they've already been painted up. I do not install these as they come out of the box. That's a very important point. I still prep them and I paint them. So that way everything matches, everything is uniform and those cheap China replacements have a nice protective coating that's gonna help them last. So again, you can see here in the back, the funny thing up here was this guy was actually chrome, this piece of trim. These ones were not, so they must have changed this at some point. I had to chip all that paint off. They didn't even really prep it properly. So a razor blade, I scraped all of the paint that was bubbling up and peeling and cracking. And I took 80 grit sandpaper to this, then 320. And you have to get chrome pretty much dull and looking like stainless or brushed aluminum in order for that paint to stick. So that's pretty much it. What I'm gonna be using, SEM trim black paint, but here's something I'm putting down first. Now, you, normally I would use like a high build primer and I've noticed that SEM has this high build primer surfacer. Nice thing is it's a black in color. So if you were to get a chip or a scratch or anything, technically it would be black underneath. The other nice thing is it's an SEM product. So you would think that this is gonna work really well with that and it's an improved application, dry time sanding, all that good stuff. So be following the directions of the SEM high build, two to three medium coats, 10 minutes of flash time in between coats, and from there, one hour dry time, scuff them down with a scotch pad, and then I'll do my two to three coats of the SEM trim black. So I'm excited and interested to see how this is all gonna turn out. The wind is blowing. Let me get some, uh, or I forgot to put some tape there. So I'm going to go around everything once more, make sure it's all good. I've already wiped everything down, so we should be good to go here. So three coats of primer are on. It's actually dried for probably over two hours now at this stage. I've already gone over and kind of block sanded out the molding on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side just to make sure that all the little pits and anything that were there on these quarter windows are, is nice and straight and smooth. So that, that way we have some awesome quarter windows. The rest I'm just gonna go over with a scotch pad and that should be it. We'll do two to three coats of the SEM trim black then we'll uh, rip all this plastic off and see how it looks. So you guys are probably used to seeing something like this where the rubber has split and it's separated and maybe in some chunks, maybe things are cracking along the edge here, maybe not. But yeah, this guy is gonna be very brittle and it actually runs on the inside of your door frame. You can see this chunk missing right here, right? So what we're going to do is just roll the window down a little bit. This is probably about the only time that I like having manual windows. You don't have to worry about a key in the ignition. So if your existing channel runs are in decent shape, you'd probably be able to fold this down and pull them out. And in this case, these guys are so dry rotted, we're gonna have to pry them out of here. I've got a nice little pry bar here and I've wrapped it in some electrical tape just so we don't scratch anything. And Pretty much when they're this bad, just work your way down. And you're gonna have to do this. If you can try and get a, a little bit of a start on it, and you might be lucky. You have to go hunting for that piece. See, this guy is in there. So go over to the outside. We'll be careful not to scratch our fresh paint. There we 
go. That piece actually came out uh, reasonably well, better than the driver's side. So maybe the driver's side was parked in the Florida sun and the passenger side, not so much. Ultimately, this is what you're hoping for, that you can get this out in one piece. Voila, the other side was a million times worse and I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there that have dealt with a similar situation. So anyways, it's nice, my driveway, less stuff to sweep up on this side. So here's the new piece and you're gonna want to look for this corner because this corner goes right up in here and that's gonna be your starting point. So once you get this installed then you'll run this guy down and then we'll run the rest of it all the way down towards the front. Now, this piece came with another car that I've recently acquired. I actually came with a couple sets of these, and these ones are really nice, and they go in without very much effort, and I'm really happy with them. I've got other brands of these that have been an absolute nightmare to install, so I'm not sure. I, I don't know whose is the best. I can't say I wish I knew where these were because the plastic bags that they come in were just clear. Uh, I don't know if they originally had tags on them or stickers or what, but I'm just thankful that I have these ones because you're gonna see how nice and easy they go in. All right, so what we wanna do is we got wanna kind of pinch this so we can get it into the channel, into the window run channel. Again, for anybody who didn't know what these things are called or hear people talk about window run channels, well, now you know. So one thing you want to be mindful of is you want to make sure that it's going on that back lip, the lip that you know I was prying the material off earlier. And I just want to get it started. Okay, there we go. And you just kind of want to make sure that you lift and get everything into position. Now, if you guys have a set of these and they are fighting you, you can actually get something a little thick actually a paint mixing stick works well the lmr video will show the paint mixing stick and you can just slide this up like your window and then just tap the bottom so you can just do something like this and you know run it all the way along that would allow you to get the seal to fit properly in the channel in this case like i said these ones actually fit really nice so i'm not even requiring any tapping or anything, which is just awesome. So now down on the bottom side here, you're just gonna want to guide it down, but you don't have to worry about trying to get it in the channel down there yet. Just once it's down there, then we can start putting, just keep working our way from the top down. All right, and here's the lip on the inside that I was talking about. So you just need to make sure that you have that lip going in the right place. Just like that. Okay. Now down over here, you can see this is actually kind of pre-cut, and that's going to eventually slide over so that everything is nice and sealed and lines up with the uh, belt moldings. You can get the little pry bar that we were using. You just go like that. You get it to seat right in place. There we go. And that guy just pushed straight in there like that. Now we'll continue along. We'll do the rest of the top side and we'll get it down in there. This is probably the trickiest point in the whole install is this corner right by the mirror here. Okay, well let's not worry about that just yet. 
I'm gonna get a razor blade and cut this. And that's gonna give me a nice little access panel. Now, if you guys have power windows, then you're gonna have your power window motor here and some other stuff in the way, which means you might need to open this up and get your arm in through here, which isn't really the worst case. So don't be too afraid of that if you have to do it. Now, I'm just gonna grab, grab the molding. This is the channel right here, guys. So just start above the glass. You can see the glass is there going down in the channel. Just start feeding it down. It's actually not as tight to get it in this section of the channel as it is to get it up here. And you don't have, you know, these um, lips or anything to worry about either. So. Like I said, don't worry too much about it. You just want to kind of want to rotate things, get it in the right orientation. Sort of like this. All right. And then get your hand up in there. I don't know if you guys can see through the door lock mechanism where my thumb is. But just kind of push it get it in place there we go. And then your best friend to complete this project is going actually going to be the window so just put the window up you can see how the glass has snugged everything into place Check the outside, make sure everything looks good, and it does. Voila, brand new window channel runs, freshly painted moldings. Everything's looking really nice on project come and take it. All right guys, so there you go. That really wasn't that bad. Like I said, the brand of these window channel runs are really nice and easy to work with. Didn't have to try and lubricate them. Didn't have to try and, you know, hammer some sort of material up in there to get them to seat properly. They all went into place nicely. So really no complaints. Took me probably about 15 minutes per side. Mind you, the door panels were already removed. So if you add another 30 minutes, call it. You should be able to get this job done. If it's your first time, call it two hours, maybe two and a half hours. If you've done it before, and you've taken door panels off of Fox and all those other things, you can knock this out in under an hour, I'm sure. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. A little bit of a DIY, and I'm going to grab my coffee mug here, and I'm gonna take a little break and celebrate to Project Come and Take It.